Hi. Uh, hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> uh, you can't do, like, Asian racist accents anymore, huh? Uh, well, welcome to the Pinball Party Podcast. Um, I, m- I miss doing the Asian accent from the 90s. It's, it's terrible, right? But, oh! <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's... People aren't gonna like that. But if, if I could do an accent of a, a white... If I was, let's say, Asian or black or anything other than a cis white male, I would definitely be doing white male accents on the daily because we sound really dumb. Um, I apologize to anyone out there who is not a white male, especially in the Midwest. I probably sound terrible, and uh, that's a bummer for you. But you're tuning in anyways uh, to listen to me talk about pinball. Hello, my name's Jason. Um, I've thus far burned a few bridges, especially with the Asian demographic, and this nonsense is getting us nowhere. So let's talk about pinball. We are going to talk about why, I don't know, Labyrinth? Uh, all, there's, all the shit, all the, all the shit, all the news you want, don't come here for it. Go to Nap Arcade. K-N-A-P-P arcade. Dude's just basically, I don't know if he's a treasure chest of pinball news and he's just found the key to open it or let's use another analogy. He's a, he's a, he's another chest of pinball news, let's say, but he's had a rusty lock this whole time and someone got some lube in his hole <laughs> and creaked that fucker open and now he's just exploding um, after they lubed his hole with news, um, you know, maybe in, in the lack of a pinball show the last couple of weeks. Um, but hey, there's, there's a fantastic triple drain podcast uh, on the pinball network. Go check that out recently and a couple other ones. But I've been busy doing fucking drywall. Does anyone like mudding drywall? If Please, you know, come do mine. I'll just pay you. I'm sick of adding this dumb wall in, in my basement. So thank you, Joel and Travis and Tom for keeping me busy in my ears while I'm mudding drywall and hating every second of it. Every coat, every sand, every dust that I'm inhaling, uh, every feathered edge. Anyway, no, no more drywall talk. Let's get back to pinball. But speaking of triple drain, they recently talked about their top five favorite pinball machines. And I will do the same here shortly. Part of kind of a media thing, conglomerate. We're all talking about our top five and um, kineticist, kineticist, kineticists, whatever, no editing. I don't do that anymore. You know who I'm talking about. Thanks for reaching out. He was like, hey, we should all talk about our top five favorite games. I'll put them into this big package and we'll release them. I'll touch on whatever new news has happened recently, but I just... I haven't been paying much attention. Uh, so again, go to Nap Arcade, listen to Pinball Shows, Triple Drain, go to Pinside, whatever, go get all your news there. But I've seen the you know reveal of, of Labyrinth. Looks, uh, my first impression was looks awesome. I can't find any faults with it from a visual standpoint. I haven't played it, obviously. Um, I wish I would be playing it at Expo. I initially was going to go to Expo. I had everything booked. was going to meet a bunch of people there and all that. But hey, again, balance in the life. I need to take a little step back from being obsessed with pinball. But uh, that is one thing I'm going to miss to play because it... Wow, it looks great. Uh, Labyrinth looks great. I was never a Labyrinth enthusiast. Movie, I should say. I wasn't opposed to it. But that was never one of my growing up movies that like fit into, I don't know, you know, my social circle or it wasn't up there with, you know, as a kid, Ghostbusters, He-Man, well, maybe the cartoon, but also Masters of the Universe, Uh, Back to the Future, Star Wars, you know, the ones that all me and my friends all talked about and quoted all the the time. Uh, Labyrinth wasn't. I believe my sister, who was two years older than me, it was was a movie that she watched quite a bit and it was in her bag. It was in her bag, baby, Um, in her wheelhouse. So, I I really like the aesthetics, the aesthetics of Labyrinth, the visuals, the kind of, um, you know, as someone who's, I think I've seen the movie once, I can't quote it, I don't know any scenes, I can't go in depth. Someone who does not know the movie well, but is like, oh, that's fine. 
Uh, David Bowie's cool. It looks great. And the, the goblins, again, I haven't... Are the goblins the, 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 the kind of cross between the Hobbit, um, the old Hobbit cartoon and comic... Um, who's the director of that? Let's, no editing, right? Let's just... Uh, who, uh, who Googled? Uh, cartoon, Hobbit cartoon movie. Who's that director? Um, what, they always reference some... Um, yeah, Rankin and Bass. Rankin Bass. Rankin Bass, Rankin Bass. Their art style. It looks very reminiscent of that. If you know, don't know what I'm talking about, Google it. Rankin Bass, Rankin Bass, Hobbit. Um, it's like a cross between that and the Dark Crystal. Jim, is it Jim Henson? It's Jim Henson, right? Yeah. So, but it makes sense. But it's it's not like spooky or American pinball where you see the seams right away. Like, oh, that's nice. And then you look like a little bit closer and like, oh, it's kind of bad. It, it kind of looks cheap. Uh, no offense. It's not like they're not trying hard. Just, again, first impressions. It's like, whoa, this looks... Yeah. <laughs> it's like if JJP did it, but did it really well without all the rainbows and sparkles. Like, just nailed it. I've seen the trailers. I've seen the pictures. I've listened to a little bit of feedback, you know, online. Has it been feedback? I don't know. I'm, I've, I've heard about as much as you have. I'll just say that. And a few texts with some people. Looks great. Um, does it play great? Don't know. Audio? Uh, I can't tell. Maybe it's just a little, I don't want to say lacking from like, oh, it's not good quality. Uh, but I haven't seen it. I haven't, the trailers, I'm, I'm maybe wanting a little bit more audio. But again, maybe they're just not, you know, plugging it through. Maybe I'm not, not hearing it. Maybe, you know, whatever. Trailers are great. They're prepping for a reveal, a gameplay reveal. And uh, it first impressions are just, wow. I'm hesitantly op- optimistic. But from my history or experience on something that's not stern, <laughs> um, which maybe is going to come through in my top five games, is like, well, we'll, we'll see. Nothing against the others. Um, anyway, please, please, Labyrinth and team. Barrel of, barrel of funk, funk or funkers? Who are, these, who are these people? Barrel of fun, Labyrinth pinball, barrels, uh, whiskey barrel team. Uh, barrels of fun company uh, fantastic name uh, if I was to review the name of your company I would give it an A because that's pretty great and hopefully it's not um, barrels of trash when it comes out barrels of of, of dung um, please surprise us hopefully the carpet matches the drapes as in the fun is as good as it looks labyrinth by Barrel of Fun, coming soon to your very expensive wallet. <laughs> put it in your, put it in your breezeway like I do, or haul it downstairs, break your fucking back, regret it a week later because you you didn't get to test it because it's a pinball machine before you played it, and it's not that much fun. Repeat, trade it, sell it. Hey yo, we'll see. Labyrinth coming to a store near you, near you, near you. J C Penny, maybe J C Penny's covering. <laughs> That's what we need. We need a renaissance of like JC Penny, fucking Yonkers. Go buy your pinball machines at Pennies. <laughs> Go talk to that 15 year old uh, fuck in a high school selling pinball machines. Let him, let that salesman or saleswoman, um, hi, can I interest you in this $8,000 pinball machine? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, let's, let's do that. Um, if, if, if we move into that world where you buy pinball, retail i'm back in you're getting meth back you're getting full audio all the type of weird shit that i used to put in not that i never will again but yeah right now i'll come in back full hard uh, <laughs> i'm coming back full hard will be the first name of the episode once it goes retail aside from labyrinth you know uh rocket man uh, apparently going to be at or quote supposedly going to be at expo jjp uh, that's probably how most people feel, right? Uh, <laughs> um, Rocket Man, you say, huh? That's that's the best you got. Elton John, fantastic musician, song. I mean, music, perfect. 
But when we're looking through our bank account, we need to make some money. Well, let's let's get let's get the license that everyone wants. Well, this is going to do it. You, we all know, right? All right. We'll all say it at once. The whole the whole team of five JJPs. That, all right, let's all say it. One, two, three, and they no no one said Elton John. Um, but they're doing it. Um, but it's Steve Ritchie, and that dude makes flow for days. And I love shooting a Ritchie game. For better or for worse, I love hitting Ritchie's ramps. Um, yeah. I can't think of... Most of his games... I'd, I've never found a Ritchie game, maybe Star Wars, that I don't... I, I even like shooting it. I like the horseshoes in Star Wars. Actually, pro better, but... Every Ritchie game, at least I'll shoot it and be like, huh. Eh, that feels good. Rocket Man. Let's uh let's do a let's do a dual theme, please. We'll have Rocket Man for for the two to three people that buy it. And then we'll have uh, Matrix, you know, something else for everyone else that wants an awesome theme pinball machine that'll shoot incredible. However, we will see what Mr. Ritchie gets to do with a much larger budget at JJP versus Stern. Those are the rumors anyways. We'll know in about, what, a week? Um, I'll be in Door County for those in the Chicago, Illinois, Wisconsin. That's where I'm going to be instead of the previously planned trip to Expo. Uh, my wife and I are going to Fish Creek for a few days. We fell in love with Door County years ago, 10 years ago. Um, it's a great, tranquil place Yeah, you know, to get away and just not do real life but uh eat great pizza at uh wild tomato holy shit i want to franchise that place personally and um yeah and, and, and relax so expo is in a week uh we're gonna see all a bunch of other stuff ninja apocalypse ninja ninja escape what, ninja gaiden i don't know that other pinball machine that looks broken we'll be at expo there'll be a bunch of stuff instead of speculate let's just get into my top five games so, a bunch of medias are talking about their top five games, as previously mentioned, and they're going to be all conglomerate. So, um, I'll just start. However, Mr. Whoever cutting these, feel free to cut and paste however you'd like, but uh, here's where I start my top five games from Jason at the Pinball Party Podcast, courtesy of... Ah, ooh, actually, I was going to say myself, but nah, this one will be courtesy of the only and best place to buy pinball machines. And that is flipping out pinball. When I buy my pinball shit, I buy from flipping out. From toppers are playing dreamy outs, I've got it figured out. Flipping out, figured out. When I think of pinball, I think flipping out. Flipping out, figured out. Figured out. When I buy, 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 I buy from flipping out. out. Buy, buy, buy. I should have added that harmony. Shit. Some other time. It might be buried in there. There's a few. Anyway, top five favorite games. Let's start, I guess, we're doing honorable mentions, right? Um, ooh, I think honorable mentions are very important in pinball because, just to use a video game analogy, because that's all I got again and again, because board games aren't up there, you know, anymore. We're not, we're not comparing this to Monopoly in life anymore. Video games are so much more accessible because they're not $10,000. You can play, you can play tons of them in a day. You can deal with Steam refunds. You could do whatever they're quote cheap especially compared to pinball there's a lot more you can get into and so going through the billions of games and just having a definitive list is is much i think more apt but in pinball the quantity is not nearly substantial so i think having a couple honorable mentions is justified much more here than than other uh, realms of entertainment and because the game and what i mean i guess by like there's so much more quantity in pinball you spend ten thousand dollars on a game average eight thousand whatever and you play it a lot you will get bored of it if if you're of the vast majority of intelligent human beings that's duh, not, uh, duh, you know <laughs> you you will get bored of something uh but so you can't keep all of your favorite games, at least I can't, um, in one place. So your favorites vacillate to a certain extent. But I took my five that I was like, all right, Desert Island. 
basically. Like, yes, I'll get bored of them, but you know, the, the theme means something to me. I will go back to it eventually. It's not a game that I've like, I never want to fucking touch it again, which I actually have a personal list of games that I will never <laughs> because I've bought in games multiple times. I do have a list that says, Jason, do not <laughs> don't buy that again. And I'll do that in another episode. Uh, top f- worst five or don't buy these ever again games. We'll talk about that. So honorable mentions. Um, and yeah, uh, I'll just say them. I'll just say my honorable mentions. One of them, speaking of Steve Ritchie, is Black Knight Sword of Rage Pro. I absolutely love that game. In a, well, I guess not absolutely because it's not in my top five. There is a lot of things I love about it. I love the speed. I love the center shot, the the, the main shot, the the mode shot. The well, is it the mode shot? For people that know, it's the main shot and the, the ramp and the flail. It's a super satisfying shot. I love it. The music is great for a little while. Uh, as someone who finds metal appealing, I really do like it. And a double baseman myself, uh, a, a lot to like. I like shallow games as part of, you'll hear soon, uh, uh, as a whole in, in a certain standpoint. But that one's almost too shallow, like it's missing something um, after a while. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to knock it because it's it's an honorable mention of my you know top whatever. But it's great to shoot. It's super simple to explain to a noob, uh, which is often when you're going to play with a family or friend, Joel TM, you want that. Shoot for this and do that. And not, I, I Godzilla, yeah, hit the center, but. Black Knight, so you can explain the whole game in like a few sentences, which, oh, okay, is often the biggest barrier to entry of like, there's all this overwhelming, do I want to take the time to learn this? Uh, That kind of just goes away in that game, which is, oh, okay, that's nice. So Black Knight Sword of Rage is one of my honorable mentions. And I'm not saying it's number six or seven, it's just an honorable mention. Another honorable mention is... I'll say just the game that kind of, when I was younger, was the first one to keep me interested in pinball beyond just hitting it. And that is Adam's Family. That's where I spent the most time in high school getting to learn that pinball was deeper than, um, you know, just flailing. Spending a lot of time with Steve and James and John smoking cigarettes and playing oh and weed and playing adam's family um usually in the reverse order uh, we would smoke a bowl on the way to <laughs> the bowling alley or the hotel where we had to like fake like oh we have a room here to play because there's no place around here to really play it or to a, a little caesar's uh get high smoke a cigarette uh and then play adam's family for as long as we could and then smoke a cigarette and you know, repeat i learned about modes in the mansion and uh, i learned that there's a rule set to be taken seriously if, if you know for lack of a better phrase and uh the theme was just good um and yeah adam's family taught me to love pinball so i think it, it easily deserves honorable mention uh, do i want to go back and play it these days i mean i'll, I'll flip it i mean i'll flip it you know what i mean but it's uh it's it's, it's up there I'll just leave it at two honorable mentions because then I could we could go on. But let's talk about my top five favorite pinball machines. Oh, and, and I should say, I believe I've reviewed all of these on previous episodes. Ooh, except for uh, one of them. Um, all of them, but I'll, I'll say which one I haven't. But starting with number five, another Steve Ritchie. This is Stern Star Trek. This was my first game I played purchased stern star trek pro to be specific was the first one a good low barrier to entry as a star trek fan growing up on next generation and deep space nine and voyager and uh the original movies um especially wrath of khan and on the first one whatever my parents were, were trekkies and uh this game i went between next generation and this as my first game because it was like uh I think four grand was my budget back then. I think this cost me 4200 Bought it from a guy in Rochester, Minnesota. He showed me how to load a game in the back of my vehicle. 
and I got a home and it was, we all can relate, I think, to the first pin experience. It's, it's pretty cool. My family was there. They live uh, in the neighborhood. Um, my, my parents, I should say. So they were there, like helped me unload it. And my wife and daughter were like at the door, like, you got it. Like, let's, let's load it up. And they all helped and figured out how to put the legs back on and turn it on. And everyone was just like, what the, whoa, you know, the lights and the sounds and Star Trek and everyone was kind of blown away. And it was a, you know, monetary big purchase. And, um, yeah, I had never played the game because that was the first time of getting into this. And it wasn't that I had slowly been playing a lot of pinball machines and then I wanted to buy one that I've been playing. It was just, I want to buy a machine and let's get nuts. And here we are today, <laughs> pinball party. But yeah, Star Trek, Stern Star Trek. From the simple rules to me are kind of the worst part of that game. I Whatever. But the sound, the visuals, the warp ramp for holy fuck's sake... Probably my favorite shot in all of pinball, the warp ramp. It's so good. It's so smooth. It, even when that game gets boring, I'm like, well, I'll just hit the ramps. They feel great. And I've owned all three trims. I uh, started with a Pro. Then the next one I had, well, I had the Pro, I think, like three times. The same machine, actually. And then the LE was like, right, the LE, this is the way to go. Uh, and then, But I realized, well, the way to go is the premium because it's the best of both worlds and not too expensive. Got the premium and I was like, ah, shit, actually. <laughs> actually, I think Pro or LE is the way to go for two different reasons. The LE is the most beautiful. The side art rails are, are cool, right? Don't get me wrong. But when you're playing, you never notice it, so it doesn't really matter. It's neat. Not not that neat. Worth that much money. But the blue powder coat really matches the blue aesthetics. I was going to get the premium blue powder coated, but it doesn't really match because of the red and all that. But there's my neuroticism. There you go. That, that's that's how my brain is working. Of like, oh, okay, I'll keep the premium, but I got to make it blue. Oh, then it doesn't fucking match. Maybe I'll change the trans light. And then maybe I'll get more decals and completely waste time for no reason. I'll sell it anyways. What the fuck? But I really like the warp ramp chase lights, the difference. And the stars projectory thing um, during Klingon multiball. But why I like the LE is for those reasons. But the Pro, those plastic ramps are really fast, really smooth, and silent. Although I like the zzz of the metal, I really have a fondness for plastic ramps. It, it's it's smooth. It's I don't know. It's it's an aesthetic thing. The yeah. It's a uh, but yeah. For those reasons. Aside from the rules, which are which are fine, the theme, the gameplay, the, the man, Stern Star Trek, it's great, and it's uh, if a desert island, that would be my number five for owning, and subsequently in my top five, my number four, this and number three, ooh, they were, ugh, I don't even know if this is the correct order, but let's just do it. Number four is Stern's Ghostbusters. For those who listened to a somewhat recent pinball party. Uh, Kale and Rachel and I reviewed Ghostbusters and we creamed all over it, rightfully so. If you want to hear more in depth about why I and others love that game so much, beyond the little little talk I'll do here, go listen to uh, whatever episode. Just Google it. It's in Pinball Party. Yeah. Actually, it'll be on the Pinball Network. Um, those ones are there. Yeah. So if you want to hear the Ghostbusters Pinball Party, go check the other feed in Pinball on the Pinball Network for the Ghostbusters review. But that game... Um, was shortly after I got Star Trek Pro, I played Ghostbusters. Was it? It might have been around the same time, maybe before I bought it. I couldn't remember. I can't remember. Who cares? I played it. I hated it because I love Ghostbusters. And I was like, this game is the hardest game ever. Fuck this. I hate it. Uh, and then over time, I realized like, oh, difficulty actually is, is a good thing. Uh, so you don't get bored. And someone convinced me to have it in the home. And uh, I, I did. And I fell in love with it. Um, very similar reasons, except for the rules. The difference here in Star Trek are the rules in Ghostbusters are awesome. There's so much to do. Can they get linear? Linear? Yes, any game can. Again, this is pinball, like I said before. Every game, unless you're duh, is going to get boring eventually. Even Godzilla, everyone out there, oh, deepest, yeah, gets boring pretty fast. Ghostbusters is a lot to do. You can kind of pick and choose in a way. For those who know, know what I'm talking about. Um, if you don't, there's a couple uh, mode ladders, a couple multi-balls. Uh, so the rules are great. The difficulty, I think, is great. 
Aside from maybe the metal outlines, which sometimes are just like, God, you got to be fucking kidding me. Just, uh, just don't go down the side. Uh, physics, stop it. Yeah, aside from those, um, the audio, top notch. Art, top notch. Uh, and by audio, I mean both music and sound and calls, all of it. The play field, top notch. There's so much variety. The so spike one is kind of a sweet spot. Mm. Yeah. Since I reviewed it so recently and, and, and you heard me talk about it, Ghostbusters, go check it out. Don't buy the hate of people talking about the flipper gap and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a fantastic game. Number three is Stern. Eh? Little pattern here. Stern's Iron Man. I mentioned earlier that I do like simple games, and Iron Man is my favorite simple game, even even beyond Black Knight. So let's say it's not just for family and friends, but uh, I'll, I'll I'll say what I mean here in a second. Family and friends, though. Hey, what do you do? Well, you bash Iron Monger. You see that on the playfield? There's these these four things. There's Iron Monger. There's there's War Machine. There's Iron Man, and there's Whiplash, and you want to complete all those. So like, okay, how do you do that? Well, you hit that, you hit that, you hit that, and you hit that. Is that it? That's it. Okay. But then you realize it's pretty fast and, you know, it's easier said than done. But that's it. it it's great. Why I find, when I said, like, not just friends and family, why I find that simplicity great, even though I've gotten to, um, you know, do or die many times, not the do or die multi-ball, or, uh, but um, is that... My most often time playing pinball, not only, but most often is honestly when I'm waiting for like chicken to cook. Um, and like what? But I, I cook chicken like every other day. <laughs> I uh, I prepare meals, my own meals. I'm, I eat very, very uh, weightlifter type, if you know you know what I mean. Um, but that's, so I'm always, I always have, have about 30 minutes of like, all right, chicken's cooking or broccoli's going i roast it so vegetables about 30 minutes at 450 degrees it'll get you nice and you know toasty broccoli or brussels sprouts that's my most often because i have machines up in my breezeway which is upstairs it's like well i got 30 minutes what am i gonna do i could stare at a wall i could read a book uh but you know i'm not gonna read a book listen to a podcast but i'm not gonna listen to a podcast and stare at the wall or listen to a podcast and read a book so i often play pinball uh that 30 minutes, mind you, has to be broken up with like maybe flipping the chicken or changing something. So like every five to 10 minutes, being able to stop is good. So if I'm going to play Lord of the Rings, like God, God damn, uh, I better be cooking a very large chicken, um, the likes of which none of us have ever seen or Godzilla, same kind of thing. It's a long, it's a long thing. So I oftentimes like a quick in and out, uh, <laughs> you know, um, no, I like, I like variety in and out. But it's very appealing to not have to really think and just, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Oh, I just, oh, game's over, cool, done. I don't have to, I mean, chopping wood, sure, but I don't have to chop a lot of wood. Um, I, I like that. There's something about the simplicity that really attracts me to that game. So beyond that, if that was the rules, the audio, ooh, boy, I love the audio in that game. I know a lot of people know there's a custom mix out there with a little bit of ACDC added, a couple of songs. I have it hosted on Pinside if you need it. I think it's 1.86 code for the for the Vault Edition. I added a, a chain, tweaked a couple things and added some Justin Hammer stuff. So if it's if you need it in the Vault Edition, it's out there. Just Google Google it. But I'm I'm gonna permanently host that because I just I, I love I love what's done. I didn't come up with the sound package. I tweaked a couple things, but I love the sound. I love the I mean, the feeling of speed is a lot from the sound because it's not nearly as fast or brutal as like Walking Dead, I don't think, or Black Knight. But with the and, and, and all the rocket sounds and, and blaster shit, it makes you feel like you're uh, you're kicking some ass. The theme is good, good to great. I mean, Iron Man's a fantastic movie, and uh, yeah, I I love it for its simplicity, its its ease of access, and it's just. It's like let's let's fucking party. You want it? You want to play a game? Let's go. And you go in, and when you're done, you're done. You're not thinking about strategy later, you know, much. But so number three is Iron Man. So number two and number one, depending the, depending on the day, this would switch. But I gotta go with my gut. And number two is the only one 
I have not reviewed on a podcast, so you can't go back and listen to more in depth. I don't believe. But I've talked about it many a time. Uh, and that's Stern's Jurassic Park. Stern Jurassic Park premium, but pro is actually really great too. Uh, LE, I guess. LE or LE 30, whatever you want. The To put it to bed, the T-Rex head grabbing the ball and whatever, like everyone has said, it gets old after a while. It Owning it, it's, it's cool, but not needed. The thing that's needed, I think, is the Raptor gate. It's just, uh, and needed is, uh, needed is kind of in quotes. The pro in that is fantastic. But because it's one of my, it's my favorite, it'd be number one if it's like, what game do you want to play the most? It's Jurassic Park. Um, but uh, the theme is, is good. Good to great. Uh, I'm, I like Jurassic Park. I like movies, you know, whatever. It's not, I don't have a bedroom of Jurassic Park. Yeah. Um, or any of that. But dinosaurs. They're sweet. The shots feel great. The rules are second to none. Um, again, there's always negatives, but this game speaks to me. It's a very relaxing game for me. It's kind of the opposite of Iron Man to where Jurassic Park is like, all right, I'm going to turn it on. The music's going to start. Dun, 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 dun. And I'm like, all right, strap in. Uh, you can trap the ball a lot. You can post pass really easy. Um, you can kind of just, all right, I got to take my shots. Um, there's hurry ups. Um, aside from the smart missile, I'm at, like the, the hurry ups aren't like you have to hit it now, which I really appreciate. Sure. The rescues over time, the dinosaurs will eat them. And then the more you go, the, the farther you go, um, throughout the paddocks. Yeah. But as long as you have enough rescues to kind of make your way through it, you know, you don't need to freak out about every single one. Uh, for those who don't play it much rescues is kind of a part of the, I'll say mode, uh, you need to hit them. You need to hit these people to collect, collect their shots before the dinosaur gets to that and, and eats them and cancels it, basically. So it's kind of a hurry up, but it's a very slow hurry up. I don't like games with a lot of hurry ups. Um, hello, Star Wars. Stern, like, I don't want to be stressed out when I'm playing. If I want a quick, fast game, I'll play something like Iron Man or Black Knight. If I want a slow and like relaxing game, I'll play Jurassic Park and, and another. But if it's, no, play exactly how I need you to play. Hit the hurry up. Hurry up. I don't like being forced to play a certain way uh, in that sense. I get that there's certain rules, but like, oh, hit this, hit this, hit. Like, I don't want to. Maybe I don't want to. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm playing your game, I guess, in that scenario, which is very um, <laughs> Asian, hey, callback, uh, way of of Nintendo's philosophy and somehow, in some of their games, Zelda, Mario, more so Zelda, they are like, this is the product we've made and we want you to play it a certain way. And that is, that's cool. It works a lot of times, but in pinball, I'm, I'm, I don't like it. You know, again, if, if money were no object and quantity of pinball machines were a thing, then hurry ups wouldn't be okay. Not enough. I'm going down a fucking rabbit hole on hurry ups back to Jurassic Park. I love the slowness of it. If you want to take it at that speed, it's very clear of what to do. Um, the sounds are great. The, the shots are great. It. I don't know. There's not really much to fault about it. The O shot is difficult, but you want to have some difficult shots. Um, there's so many. Sh I love most of the shots in that game. Damn, Jurassic Park. Yeah, I'm, I love playing it. I don't know if it's one that like when you have like a 45 or an hour long game, I'm just guessing, you know, the very long ones where you get to like the visitor center and you've done so much and oh my God, holy shit. Oh, do you want to push start again? Eh, not right away. Maybe, you know, go vent by, you know, kicking the wall or smashing your head against some glass, you know, however you need to do it. Take a line of cocaine before you come back and, and play it again. But, but while you're playing it, you're in it. So I guess that leaves one left. Uh, you probably guessed it. It's a game I've, I've owned way too many times, and it's ridiculous. Uh, I guess it's not ridiculous to me. It's ridiculous to other people that I've owned this so many times, which is odd that you care. But that's Stern's uh, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings um, 
when it comes to theme, there isn't a pinball machine that this sounds so weird. Um, there isn't a pinball machine that theme means more to me than this game. Lord of the Rings is, um, well, so in context, love the movies. You know, the, the movies turned me on to it. Uh, Fellowship of the Ring, I saw it and I, you know, was wow, wowed by it. Um, I was in my very early 20s, if not like 19, whatever year it came out. Loved it. I was really drawn to the relaxing Shire aesthetic, aside from the story, all the, like, it's great. It's it's one of my favorites of all times, but, but the Shire specifically and what continues to kind of like in my, in my head, honestly, like it, it relaxes me just thinking about it. Um, I've, I'm one that very much obsesses over things or works it puts a lot of energy, a lot of, uh, my mind is just constantly, it's just, that's just me. I'm just telling you. Um, so that really grounds me a lot. The kind of, um, seeing it, thinking about it, Lord of the Rings, um, thinking about all the meaning of just, I mean, it's not really super deep, but you know, uh, obsessing over something and how letting it go is very freeing. I mean, as simple as that, you know, to me, it's, it's a reminder to breathe, Honestly, like the whole, the, yeah, it's kind of what Lord of the Rings is to me. I've, I've made the Middle Earth maps in wood. Um, I mean, like I have a wooden one that I've I've made and I've burned and you know finished it and everything. I've I've made custom frames for some art that my wife has bought me. I have uh, a lot of the gentle giant busts of Lord of the Rings, a couple posters. I have no admittance except party business doormat. You know, um, I'm not like a token obsessive you know what it is it gives it a negative connotation right like uh, how a lot of us are just huge fans of lord of the rings and, and count me in as a fella token buff i i find it yeah lord of the rings means a lot to me and the game reflects a lot of that from the atmosphere of the the warm incandescent lights and when you start uh the game and da -da 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 more so pin sound, I guess. You can get that theme in there, which just relaxes me. Um, you know, they're a uh, fun fact. I live in uh, Wisconsin. The winters are terrible. Um, we have a hot tub in the back. And one of my favorite things to do, again, in the, in the realm of relaxing, is, yeah, surprisingly, sit in the hot tub, but is listening to something called The Hobbit calm mix which is someone on youtube who took some of the token music and just took all the kind of calm the shire theme and all that stuff and put it into a mix and i i just i play it on my phone and i sit in the hot tub out and looking at the stars at night in the cold and sitting in a hot tub uh highly recommended so the the game gets me in that mood it can um the golden warm whites parchment paper look of the whole thing uh yeah it just mm. it's a game that i have just as much fun looking at and like cleaning and changing out the lights and just thinking about it as i do playing it if not more than playing it as i said earlier if there's one game on here that i would first place as playing it would be jurassic park but a close second would be lord of the rings when i've had that break of not playing an hour and a half game and of uh just destroying the ring a couple times and trying for trying to get to Valinor and like, am I wasting my life? What am I doing? Holy shit. What have I done? And I sell it, <laughs> you know? Um, but, um, I've owned, I've owned it a few times. Um, the LE, the regular beat to shit ones, one with like 40 plays on it, like basically brand new. Um, and the ones that play the best are like the ones that have a lot of plays. I don't know. If, yeah. Um, the LE to me was my, I think worst playing game. I don't know if it's the extra clear coat, but I don't know. Um, I've played games with the power, super power flippers, whatever they're called, the stronger coils. Uh, I've played them with fans, with regular flippers, with fans, no fans, you name it, rebuild. I've done all of it. Um, and at the end of the day, some of that is charm uh, that like when you're getting to destroy the ring, I just need to get it up that ramp, you bitch. Uh, you know, some of that is just part of it. And um, 
you know, I, I've talked about it recently. Last episode, was it? When I was talking about Stranger Things, I, I gushed about Lord of the Rings. So you get it. Yeah, you get it. You've probably turned it off by now. But yeah, my, my number one is Lord of the Rings from theme, shots and layout. Yeah, second to none, in my opinion. Sound, especially with pin sound, second to none. Otherwise, it's you can't blame White Star. It's pretty bad quality, but the sound is great. The calls are great. Shots are great. Art is great. Lighting is great. Theme is, uh, yeah, I mean, man, oh, man. It's if there was a what's your one game desert island? It's it's no question Lord of the Rings. No question. Will I play it every day? No. Will I go months without playing it? Absolutely. Would if it was, hey, you can never buy another pinball machine again. It, yeah, Lord of the Rings. Easy. Easy. It, no question. Just I'd have it and that's it. That's it. Um, because you could not always go for Valinor or go for, you know, um, even destroy the ring or there and back and just say like, you know what? I'm just going to do the fellowship of the ring multi-ball and have everyone escape. Th- that's hard enough, man. I mean, shit, I've maybe done it once, you know, I think, but I never really try. It's like, once I get to fellowship, I'm like, well, yeah, I'll, I'll do well enough. I'm really just trying to destroy the ring and whatever. So I don't care if I, you know, have everyone escape, but, but you know what I'm talking about when you do, <laughs> you know, you hit ball rock and then you hit one of the ramps and feels good. A little dopamine. Um, yeah, so number one, Lord of the Rings. Let's go through this list real quick again. The honorable mentions were Black Knight, Sword of Rage, and Adam's Family. Number five was Stern Star Trek, uh, either the LE or Pro, or Premium, honestly, whatever. Ghostbusters, I didn't say it, but Pro. Iron Man, Vault Edition is the only one I've owned. Is there a big difference? No, but come on, get the Vault Edition. Uh, Jurassic Park. Any of them, but premium. And Lord of the Rings. Actually, not the limited edition. Well, thanks for spending your last 41 minutes with me talking about my five favorite games, a couple stragglers, and uh, you know, talking about, I guess, whatever's expo next week. If you have any you know, questions, comments, concerns, email me at pinballpartypodcast at gmail.com. Go buy your pinball machines at Flippin' Out, where you get fantastic customer service, and that's no lie. Um, even when I'm not doing this, that's that's who I'm dealing with. What's up, Zach? Hey, Joel. Hey, Kale. Hey, Rachel. Go listen to Electric Bat Arcade podcast, Electric Bat Cast. Go check out Nap Arcade for all your news. Um, I hope everyone has fun at Expo. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with all these top five lists, and uh, maybe next time we'll do bottom five. Um, All right. Thanks for joining. We'll see you later.